My wife said, Jack, you've been playing with airplane engines all your life. Started out on model airplanes, which were the rage at the time when I was growing up. In 1956, in the fall of 56, I was working for Orenda Engines uh, in uh, Toronto, Malton, <clears throat> on the Iroquois engine for the Avro Arrow. And uh, one day an ad appeared in the Toronto papers to the effect that Pratt & Whitney Canada were looking for engineers for a gas turbine design and development group. That's how it happened, and uh, it was the best move I ever did. Eh? Now, we were only a small group in the first few months, but that rapidly grew to, oh, 100 so or so within, uh, within a year. Uh, by the time we, we ran the first engine, it was probably significantly more than that. Uh, but uh, it was always very much of a, a very cohesive uh, team, Nobody held back any secrets. It was wide open uh, all the time. We shared ideas. And uh, it's kind of difficult sometimes to know who thought of what first. Huh? Can you recall or, or tell us a little bit about what the market was like at that time? Uh, Beach were the first uh, people really to install PT-6 engines in uh, in one of their aircraft. And then uh, de Havilland, uh, who had had some experience with the engine in the uh, researched Twin Otter, uh, stole research aircraft, uh, uh, saw the potential of the engine in uh, some of their designs, starting with the, the Beaver, which they terminized, and uh, then the Twin Otter, and uh, that was a highly successful aeroplane. The Twin Otter has been res involved in many rescue flights to Antarctica, uh, flies in the jungles of this world, primitive airstrips, etc. And uh, the reliability, flexibility, resistance to foreign object damage, etc., of the PT 6 design uh, made the it possible to operate an aircraft like the Twin Otter in all kinds of severe environments. Uh, this is really due to the fact that it's, the engine never stood still. Uh, it went through a number of growth steps and this is continuing to this day. Uh, the engine breaks up into modules so you can kind of do uh, mechano sets with all of these parts to adapt uh, the major components to uh, different customer requirements. Uh, this has been a very important uh, factor in uh, developing, continuing to develop new markets uh, for the PT6 series of engines and uh, developments which uh, required uh, tremendous amounts of effort by many, many people. And I must say both inside Pratt & Whitney and in you know, a worldwide network of, of suppliers of parts and raw materials and so on who, who have uh, dedicated energy and conscientiousness to making uh, the PT-6 uh, series of engines what it is. Thank you very much for your talk today and for your contribution to such a legendary product in aerospace. It's been a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you very much. Without further ado, uh, please join me in uh, warmly welcoming uh, Dr. Jean-Pierre Beauregard. I was most fortunate in having the opportunity of uh, leading some quite large teams, both on the development side and on the production side of the PT-6 series of engines. More than 51,000 PT-6s have been delivered to date. That's an average of more than 1,000 per year. And the interesting thing is that there's no let up in this. 
the average over the last 15 years has been 1,100 engines a year. There have been 90 different models of the PT6 ranging from 600 to close to 2,000 horsepower. Now some of these models are quite minor variations in detail rating, for example, to satisfy specific customers. It's the modular design of the engine that has been a very significant factor in tailoring the engine to uh, specific customer requirements. There's been over 40% improvement in power to weight ratio, in some cases up to 50%. There have been 130 different aircraft applications, 7,200 operators in 180 countries, 380 million operating hours. Well, I hope you will agree with me that uh, after 50 years, the PT6 is really still going strong. Thanks very much.